Hi, this is Kelly with MicaSense, and today I'm going to show you how to summarize your imagery at the plot level using Zonal Statistics and QGIS. This video will contain two modules. Module 1 will demonstrate one way to create a grid of zones that can be overlain with raster data to compute zonal statistics. The raster layer can be any type of raster including single waveband imagery, such as red, red edge, or near infrared, a vegetation index, or a digital surface model. Module 2 will explain how to use the Zonal Statistics plugin for QGIS to create statistical summaries of near-infrared reflectance for each plot. If you already have a vegetation index raster, as well as a shapefile that delineates your plot boundaries, then you may only need Module 2. Researchers often ask how to summarize NDVI or other vegetation indices at the plot level. Sometimes this is where small plots are arranged in an experimental setup, such as randomized block design, and sometimes the plots are part of a variety trial or phenotyping experiment. Whatever your reason is for having separate areas in your field, we are providing this tutorial to help you process the imagery into a tabular format that you can integrate with other data that you have for your plots. Before we get started, please make sure that you have a basic familiarity with QGIS. You should also have a multiband geotip that has been properly calibrated. I prefer to use QGIS LTR, which stands for long-term release, because it's more stable. More recent versions typically have bugs in them, and I don't recommend dealing with newer releases unless they have a feature that you can't live without. You don't want to accidentally calculate the wrong index, so make sure that you have the band ordering correct. Many of you are probably used to a band ordering convention where band number increases with wavelength. Atlas outputs conform to this convention, but outside of this, including how the raw image captures are saved on the SD card, the red edge band is actually band 5 and near infrared is band 4. We have encountered several people who unwittingly calculated NDRE when they thought that they calculated NDVI. Before we continue, let's discuss what a zonal statistic is so that the term isn't too daunting. A zone corresponds to any discrete area in a field that you want to characterize using one or more descriptive statistics. A zone could be a management unit, an entry in a variety trial, or a specific treatment in an experimental design. You may only have 10 zones, but we have also seen fields with hundreds of zones. A zone could be a subplot. It is any discrete parcel of land that you want to summarize. Fortunately, free software is available that allows you to calculate zonal statistics. QGIS has a plugin called, you guessed it, the Zonal Statistics plugin. Many thanks to the developers who contribute to QGIS. There are many descriptive statistics that you can choose from. Most of the time, the mean or sum will correlate with ground truth measurements of leaf area index or similar. Standard deviation may be interesting because it would tell you how much variation in NDVI occurs within a plot. Relatively low values for standard deviation of NDVI correspond to zones that have more uniform ground cover. Sometimes you have to think about the data to figure this out, but ideally you'll know this beforehand as part of your experimental design. Let's start module one and learn how to create a grid of zones. Before we continue, let's make sure that you have the Zonal Statistics plugin installed, as well as all of the necessary toolbars activated. In order to install the Zonal Statistics plugin, click on Plugins on the top menu bar, and then go to Manage and Install Plugins. From here, you can start typing in Zonal Statistics and it should come up. Next, right-click on the gray space on the toolbar to reveal a dialog box where you can select the appropriate toolbars. A handy rule of thumb for dealing with GIS software is that if you can't find a tool or feature, then just start right-clicking everywhere and something surprisingly productive will happen. In this case, doing so allows us to choose which toolbars are visible. Go ahead and add your geotiff to the map project. 
In this case, we are going to use a 5-band GeoTIFF, but you could simply load an NDVI raster if you are certain that this is the only index you want. If you have a red edge and you only ever use NDVI, then you are missing out on all the things you can do with the other wave bands. Now let's adjust the image display channels. Right-click the raster in the Layers panel and select Properties. Now let's modify the default band rendering. QGIS sets the default band rendering for the red band as band 1, green band as band 2, and blue band as band 3. This works for many RGB sensors such as Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, etc. However, for a true color image, MicaSense Red Edge cameras should have band assignments as shown, with the red band as band 3 and the blue band as band 1. Next, click the Load button. You will notice that the min max values change in the band rendering dialog box. This is because QGIS stretches the color values based on the range of data in the raster. Now click OK. Notice how the soil has more of a realistic brown tint, whereas before it was kind of purplish? Soil reflectance often increases with wavelength. The 1, 2, 3 display order caused blue soil values to appear larger than red soil values, and that gave the soil a purplish hue. But we just fixed it, so no need to worry about it anymore. You can focus on other things, like making sure that your cat isn't plotting against you. Or you can simply proceed with this tutorial. We are going to zoom in on the west portion of the field where you can clearly see different vine rows. This is an image of a red grape variety that is part of a fungicide spray trial. In order to calculate zonal statistics, you first need zones. If you already have a shapefile for your zones, then please make sure it properly overlays onto the raster image. If it was created using high accuracy GPS or a different geotiff, then the relative spatial orientation could be off by around four to six meters. Now I will show you how to create several zones that all have the same length and width. There should be a toolbox open on the right hand side of your QGIS window. If not, click Processing on the top menu bar and then select Toolbox. In the Processing Toolbox panel, you'll need to drill down into QGIS Geo Algorithms, then Vector Creation Tools, and then finally to Vector Grid. When you click this, a dialog box will open. Press the button on the right of Grid Extent. You'll have two options. Use Layer Canvas Extent would populate the entire visible extent of the GeoTIFF that is visible on the map canvas. I want a little bit more control for this tutorial, so I'm going to choose Select Extent on Canvas. Then press the left mouse button and drag the mouse to cover the area you want to populate with a grid of zones. X-spacing refers to the horizontal width of each zone. Y-spacing refers to the length of each zone. You may have noticed that this dialog box does not mention the units for X or Y spacing. They are in map units. Since the map projection is UTM, then the units are in meters. For this tutorial, we'll choose 8 meter width and 3 meter zone height. Choose whatever the dimensions will be for your plot or zone size and then save the file. Please note that the map scale might be off due to GPS accuracy issues. Therefore, the plot dimensions generated by the following procedure may have some slight error and require adjustment of the X and Y spacing values. Ta-da! Here are your zones. The zones are not aligned with the vine rows, so we're going to rotate them. Now right-click the Zone Shapefile and select Toggle Editing. This allows you to start manipulating the grid of zones that you just created. Now go to the Attributes toolbar and choose the Select Features tool. 
Left click and drag the cursor across all grid zones to select everything. Click on Rotate Features in the Advanced Digitizing toolbar. Left click on Grid Array so it turns orange, then release the mouse button. Next, hold down your left mouse button and rotate the grid until it is aligned with the direction of the rows. Now they are aligned but they aren't spaced correctly. Let's shift them up and down so they fall neatly around the vine rows. Now go to the Attributes toolbar and press Deselect Features from All Layers. Now use the Select Features tool to select one row in your grid of zones. The Digitizing toolbar has a nifty tool called Move Features. You will use it to center the grid zones on the vine rows. Left click, leave the button depressed, and drag it so it is centered on a vine row. Now press Deselect Features. Repeat these steps for the other rows in your grid. Also be aware that the Advanced Digitizing Toolbar has a button to reshape features, as well as other tools to manipulate the geometry of your grid of zones. We won't cover that here, but feel free to learn on your own in order to fine tune your zones. Next, let's change the symbology to a hollow fill with a red outline. Right click the grids layer and select properties, then go to style. From here, you can change the border and the fill as well as the transparency of your layer. Once you have a symbology that you like, click apply and OK. Now everything is set up to run the plugin for zonal statistics. Go to the top menu bar and select the first row. Right click on the grid layer in the layers panel and then open the attribute table. Now you'll see that the attributes for the grid rows that are selected are highlighted. Let's pretend that these areas received a high level of fungicide treatment. Start by adding a new field. We'll give this new field the name treatment and make sure that it's a text field and the length is 10. Press OK. Now you can edit all of these zones at once since they are selected by opening the field calculator, updating the existing field, setting ID to treatment, typing the string high, and then pressing OK. Now you can see that those three zones have the treatment designation high. We'll do the same thing for the other zones by selecting them and completing the same steps. We'll call these other treatments medium and low. Now that we are done creating our zones, we'll want to save our edits, toggle editing off, and then save our project. Now let's move on to Module 2. In Module 2, we are going to learn how to use the Zonal Statistics plugin. Please make sure that you have the plugin installed by going to Plugins on the top menu bar, Manage and Install Plugins, and searching for the Zonal Statistics plugin. Now install it if you skip this in Module 1. To open the Zonal Statistics dialog box, We'll click on Raster on the top menu bar and then click on Zonal Statistics. The dialog box for the Zonal Statistics plugin is very straightforward and easy to use. For the statistics that you select, it will output the result in a tabular format suitable for use with spreadsheet or other statistical software. Typically, we have found that either mean or sum will correlate well with ground reference measurements for plant canopy attributes such as leaf area index or some descriptor of canopy density. If you are unfamiliar with what the different statistics options mean, then I encourage you to find a good primer on descriptive statistics. Let's choose band 5 as the raster layer that we want to summarize. For atlas-generated geotiffs, this refers to the near-infrared waveband. If you are using other software, it may refer to the red-edge waveband. 
Alternatively, you could load a pre-calculated NDVI or other vegetation index layer into the map canvas and select that as the raster layer. That would provide the zonal statistics for NDVI directly. If you run this tool twice, once for the near infrared layer and once for the red layer, you could calculate NDVI or some other index on the summarized data using a spreadsheet or other software. For this example, we will calculate the sum and mean statistics and call the output column NIR since we are running statistics on the near infrared wave band. Press OK and wait for the tool to finish. The time it takes for the tool to finish will depend on how many zones you have. In order to view the results, simply right click the grid layer and select Open Attribute Table. You can see the zonal summaries for the near infrared band for each plot, which should have its own ID value that somehow links to your other experimental data. To join your other data to this shapefile's attribute table, you will use what is called an attribute join, where the ID field or some other field that you created will serve as a key to link the tabular data together. If you want to export this layer as a table, the easiest way will be to copy it to the clipboard. Simply press the Select All button. Now press Copy Selected Rows to Clipboard. You can simply paste the table into a spreadsheet or a text editor. We're going to use Excel for this example. Open a new Excel spreadsheet. Now paste the values that you copied into the spreadsheet. You probably don't care about this first column, WKTGOM. It lists the geographic coordinates of the vertices for each grid zone. This gives you a glimpse into how GIS software stores the geometry descriptors for polygon data, but is not relevant at this point. Now that we've discussed how to create a grid of zones, how to calculate zonal statistics on those zones, and then how to export those values into an Excel document. We'd also like to give you some things to consider when creating your own experimental design. If you want to correlate NDVI with leaf chlorophyll content or foliar nitrogen, then you probably want to mask out any soil. To do this, you'll want to find a suitable NDVI value to threshold. Leaf chlorophyll content is often expressed as micrograms per unit leaf area. Masking out soil makes perfect sense since chlorophyll content is normalized by leaf area and not ground area, so you'll want to only consider plant pixels. However, a chlorophyll index such as NDRE or a combined index such as TKRE divided by OSAVI should provide the highest correlation with leaf chlorophyll or nitrogen. If you want to correlate NDVI to leaf area index, then you probably don't want to mask out soil that is visible due to poor stand establishment. Leaf area index refers to the amount of vegetation per unit ground area. Therefore, masking out soil is equivalent to unevenly filtering out part of the ground area, which doesn't make sense if you want a proxy for something that is normalized by ground area. I hope that this video has been helpful, and I encourage you to visit our blog and knowledge base to learn more about our sensor solutions and how people are using them. See you next time!